Hello everyone and welcome. We weren't able to leave Bozeman until noon yesterday because a tree fell on the house and so we didn't get here until after midnight and then we drove through a ferocious thunderstorm, lightning, driving rain, and if anyone ever tells you there are no bugs in the desert, don't believe them because after it rains, there are no seums. No seums are these tiny little black insects that bite you all over your head. They love to bite you behind your ear and on your neck and on your head. So bring a head net and a full body net suit <laughs> and then you'll be okay. We're getting a very late start, obviously, because we had to set up the tent and then we had some issues. Two years ago, we went to Dark Canyon and I said it was the end for my 25 year old tent, but I kept it anyway and we brought it here to Utah and the zippers are all broken. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have to go to the store in Cannonville. It looks like there's been quite a bit of development since we were last here, so maybe they'll have a tent. Looks like it's mostly houses though, but we'll see. We're going on a hike today and tell you a little bit about it later. Hello, Sula here, reporting from an undisclosed location in the deserts of Utah. Right now I'm in a Bortle II. I got my Maxitoff Cassegrain all set up, 150 millimeters, to do some stargazing. And in a couple of days, we're gonna go way out to a remote area of the desert to a Bortle I and do some even better stargazing. So let's get started. Hello everyone, Sula here. Well, we finally made it to a Bortle One site. It took a lot of effort to get here and we went through a lot of trials and tribulations in addition to the ones I mentioned earlier. We also um, had some mishaps in that I forgot my intervalometer. As you can see, I brought quite a bit of equipment out here. I brought not one, but two telescopes my Eon 115 millimeter uh, triplet and my Sirius EQG mount that I was going to take photographs with but now I'm limited to 30 second photographs. I just polar aligned and my Mel Maz is really bad. The Mel is 2 minutes and the Maz is 14. That's terrible but since I can only take 13, I mean 30 second shots, I'm going to go with that. And over here, you can see that I brought my 150 millimeter Orion Maxitoff Cassegrain telescope that my friend Katie gave me for traveling. And I got to tell you, it's very compact and it's perfect for traveling. And um, we looked at a bunch of things last night and man, it, it really performs well. But we'll find out whether that's because it's a Bortle 1 or because it's just a fantastic telescope. So this is all set up and ready to go to look while I take some 30 second shots with the Eon. Whoa, the Saturn is incredible. Can we put this three time follow on it? Absolutely. I've never seen Saturn so big. Beautiful. Oh, wow, the rays. Wow, beautiful. 
my only complaint is it's windy and this single fork arm doesn't do well in the wind. Other than that, what a beautiful view of Saturn. Beautiful. It's a collared lizard. Hello. Hello, I'm Sula, host of Sula's Big Adventures. Welcome to the deserts of Utah. We don't usually come this late, it's July, but Pepper's family member had COVID and so we had to delay it. And then the day before we left, I almost didn't think we were gonna make it at all because a tree fell on my house. And so we had to wait for the tree to be removed and make sure there weren't any holes in the roof and then now we finally are here in a Bortle One site in the deserts of Utah. But we did have some other trials and tribulations. I had a four inch crack in my windshield. When we left dark skies forever, this crack went only to there. And after all this driving, it's going to there and we're hoping it'll stop there. And since we've gotten here, it's expanded to eight inches and we're hoping that it doesn't completely crack open before we get back to Dark Skies, Montana. And another mishap was that I've had this tent for 25 years. It's a North Face Nebula. It was a fantastic tent, but after we went camping in Dark Canyon, I really should have thrown it away because once we set it up here, we found out that all of the zippers are broken. So we found some duct tape, which was miraculous because in a dark sky place, there aren't very many amenities. In fact, there are none, there is none. But we did find some duct tape and we've duct taped the tent. And so we've overcome the adversity so far uh, it rained the first night and then it was cloudy, but we had clear skies the past two nights and we've done some fantastic stargazing. So, what I'm going to do in this episode is have a scientific empirical study. Is stargazing and astrophotography worth the effort it takes to get to a Bortle 1? Or... Can you get just as good by staying in a light polluted place with lots of amenities? Let's find out. One other mishap was uh, we're in one of the most remote and darkest places on earth. And so obviously you have to take precautions out here, you can die. So I brought my Garmin so we could hike during the day and have GPS coordinates. And in the middle of nowhere, it died. <laughs> so fortunately we made it back to the trailhead and we actually have a backup Garmin, but that was the other mishap. Hello everyone. We left the Bortle One site. We ran out of ice. And also last night when we were ready to stargaze, a ferocious storm descended on us with lightning and thunder and high winds and very dark, ominous clouds. And so we were not able to stargaze a second night in the Bortle One. So we came back to here to Bortle Two and there's a quarter moon and even though there's a quarter moon, 
and this portal too, you can clearly see the Milky Way. I can tell you, you cannot see the Milky Way in a Bortle 4 with a quarter moon. Sometimes you can't even see the Milky Way in a Bortle 4 at all. And so part of my empirical evidence of the importance of searching out and preserving dark skies is that you can see the Milky Way in a Bortle 2 even on a quarter moon night. Hello everyone, Sula here. It's the last night of our trip to one of the most remote and darkest places in the United States. A desert in southern Utah. Earlier in the week, it was just a crescent moon and after it set, we got one of the most incredible and my personal best look at the Milky Way ever in my entire life. The amount of stars we could see was mind boggling and it was so beautiful. We went primitive camping in a very remote area and extremely dark. And unfortunately, a ferocious storm came with lightning and thunder and rain and I wasn't even able to put the telescopes up. And as the week has progressed, the moon has gotten bigger as it is wont to do. And now on our last night, it's waxing gibbous. I think it's 76% illuminated. But we're out here with my 115 millimeter Eon triplets. I'm going to take some photographs. And I have my Maxitoff Cassegrain that Katie gave me. Thank you, Katie, for some visual observing. And I can say that even with the moon severely interfering that we can still see the Milky Way and we can still see a lot of stars. So I'm going to see how these pictures compare even though the moon is interfering. So I'll compare the pictures that I'm going to take this evening in the Bortle 1 to ones that I've taken from a Bortle 3 where I usually observe in Montana but they're not really comparable because of the waxing gibbous moon and other factors such as seeing and cloud cover that are not controllable but really that's just for fun the main reason for coming here was to have the visual experience to see the milky way like that and to see all those stars that is an experience that i will not soon forget and i hope that every amateur astronomer will have the chance in his or her lifetime to experience the same thing in a Bortle 1 site where it's truly dark and beautiful. The moon washes out every um, deep sky subject, object. So we've been looking at the planets and we're very lucky tonight to be able to see Saturn, Neptune, and actually I had one of the best Saturn I've ever seen and Neptune um, we could see it and then we have Jupiter and Mars and Uranus so it's a feast for the planets and this little cute telescope is perfect for planets. Well, that concludes my trip to one of the most remote and darkest places in the United States. I would have to say that the highlight of the trip was yesterday when we went on an exhilarating hike through a challenging slot canyon and then after dinner we decided to stay up until the waxing gibbous moon set which was very late but it was well worth it because then five planets rose and we got delicious looks at Saturn, at Neptune, at Jupiter, at Mars, and finally at Uranus. 
And then when it got totally dark, I thought that last week was the best view I would ever have of the Milky Way, but I was wrong. Yesterday, we saw the Milky Way like a dream. It was ineffably beautiful and bright. It seemed like you could reach out your hand and touch the Sagittarius star cloud. It was so beautiful. And I'm so grateful that I had this opportunity. I know I've been lucky in my life and I'm so grateful to the universe that I had this wonderful life, the physical well-being and the financial ability to come to a place like this and experience nature in all its glory and beauty and the universe. So thank you universe. Also, thank you to my dear mother who passed away December 10th, who made my wonderful life possible. Thank you, Mama. I know you're in heaven. Thank you, Katie, for that fantastic gift, the perfect travel telescope. And Orion Maxitol Cassegrain 150 millimeter telescope, perfect for camping and, and traveling. And finally, thank you, Pepper. For coming with me because I know I could not have come on this trip to this incredibly remote area by myself so thank you so much it was the best retirement gift a person like me could possibly ask for thank you so much I thoroughly enjoyed it so to all you amateur astronomers out there are dark skies worth it do they really matter yes they do and if you have the opportunity to spend time under a truly dark sky, seize the opportunity and fight for dark skies. Dark skies forever. From the deserts of Southern Utah, Sula signing off.